Welcome to 558 Parkside Tech, where we talk about everything tech, from coding to design, from the past, the present, and the future of tech. Our goal is to educate the culture. I'm your Tech Plug Mike. Let's get it right after the jump. Yeah, yeah, 558 Parkside Tech, in effect, tech, tech, 558 Parkside Tech, in effect, tech, 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 in the future. Let me introduce you. 558 Parkside Tech, about to school you. 558 Parkside Tech, in effect, tech, 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 558 Parkside Tech, in effect, tech, tech, 558 Parkside Tech, in effect, tech, 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 Today I'm talking about the fourth industrial revolution, which is the automating of everything we touch and see. There's a company called Otto, O-T-T-O, who are automating trucks. I think with a $30,000 retrofit, they can have a truck just drive itself. It's autonomous trucks. Uber has invested in self-driving cars, so I don't know what's going to happen with the current Uber driver. Or even the current truck driver, if Otto is successful with uh, rolling out these automated trucks. It's interesting because I wonder what the guy thought who was bagging groceries back in the day. I know he was probably thinking, or she was probably thinking, man, I'm going to have this job forever. Ain't nothing going to happen. I'm good. Until they had that self-checkout, and then you see those jobs go away. There's a company called Boston Dynamics also. I was just thinking about who has this robot called Spot and who's working on AI and robots. And I think recently, if you notice, I think Tesla just rolled out. Um, I think Elon Musk came up with some AI concept that he showed. So as you can see, with this fourth industrial revolution taking place, that's where black Americans are. They're not even in tech right now. So with this fourth industrial revolution speeding up even faster, they're probably not going to be there either unless we make a change, unless we start putting forth an effort to learn more about technology and make sure our children and make sure we are currently, even adults, are in this space. It's interesting because I was thinking recently while watching this program about, I think it was called The Future of Work. It's a Vice program. You could probably catch it on YouTube or on, um, I think it was on HBO. And it was talking about the future of work. And it was talking about how a lot of executives were asking technologists to slow down. Because if they don't slow down, there'll be no jobs in the future. What are people going to do if they don't have work, if we've automated everything? In fact, there was this uh, guy was running. I don't know. I forgot. I think his name was Andrew Yang. And he was talking about something. And everybody thought it was crazy at the time. He was talking about giving everybody $1,000 a month. And everybody's like, oh, free money handout. But I think what he was trying to say is as you automate jobs and people don't have jobs, you're going to have to give them money to go do something. You know, and we all thought he was crazy. Of course, he didn't win. And then I think he ran for mayor. He didn't win that either. I don't think people understood what he was saying. But technology is taking over. It's already here. In fact, Congress can't even figure out how to control the technology companies. They probably never will. So what do we do? Why are blacks not in this space? Now I can get into all the ethnic reasons and the white man trying to do this and this happened and that happened, but I won't. That's not what this channel's for. But I will say, I think last year when we had summer madness with the Floyd murder and all the other murders that we've seen and the marching and the big Black Lives Matter movement, I noticed a lot of companies tried to get involved and tried to help out. And what did they do? They threw money at it. As if money would solve the problem. I think Google donated some money. Apple donated $10 million to HBCUs. But what I always wondered, which I thought was funny, was why don't you just hire people and train them and teach them right then and there? Why throw money way over here and think that that's what's going to better the situation. Me buying more computers is going to make everybody learn technology. I don't know why they think that that's going to solve the problem. Either way, we need to be in this space. And then in a lot of the corporations that have diversity now, because of that Black Lives Matter movement last year, if you notice, Luis and where I work, which I won't say what that is, it might get me in trouble. Um, 
they started this diversity group. And I never forget, uh, CEO wrote a, a letter and it was, it was very heartwarming. I was like, whoa, this is deep. My man, I think my man got it. I thought he was black. It was so dope. And then they formed this diversity group and the diversity group had everything in it, including blacks, every other group, you name it, they were in this group. But I thought it was for black people and diversity within the company. But somehow it got watered down because are they really trying to solve that problem? No. It's kind of like in some companies, uh, how my friends work at, including me, they'll show you the officer's pictures who are running the company. And you look at it, and it's usually a bunch of older white guys, and it might be a sprinkle of woman here or there who's mixed or has some other cultural background. I don't see any blacks. Then if you Google a little bit further, you start investigating a little bit because it's hard to believe you'll find out that there's 1.9% African Americans in tech. Let me say that again. 1.9%. Really? But when I walk into a building and look in customer service or I look in claims or I look in some of the lower positions, full of African Americans. But as you move up in tech, there aren't any. I'm talking about Silicon Valley, all the way up north, down south, Black people don't exist. So what do we do about it? That's the purpose for the channel. The purpose for the channel is to try to introduce tech to the culture. What does that mean? That means teaching them everything from how a department is built, the structure of a department, anal being able to do analyst work, being able to do coding, being able to understand databases, the methodology to even building anything that sits on your phone or what you see when you turn on your computer. That's the goal of it. It's interesting. When I first got started, um, I got my first job, I was in Boston. And when I got started, of course I thought I knew everything. Getting out of school, you think you know everything, you know. You think you're dope, right? Um, when I got hired, the, the guy who gave me my first job, his name was Neil O'Connor. I'll never forget his name. And he put me with this guy named Frank Swartz. And when I saw Frank Swartz around the corner, he had like a beetle haircut. He was like a bob in the front. He had on these really thick Coke bottle glasses and he had a bunch of pencils. And I thought to myself, oh ish, this is never gonna work. What could he possibly teach me? Come to find out he was the dopest teacher I've ever had in technology. He walked me through every single possible scenario in tech. Every piece of code I wrote, he sat by my side and explained to me, why were you doing this? Explained to me how I could do it better, made sure it worked. And this went on for over a year of just hands on, behind my back, looking over my shoulder, making sure I was doing the right thing in tech and learned the right way. And of course, I thought after two or three years, I thought I knew everything I left. And then I went to another company. And this is where I met my first black manager. Her name was Miriam. I won't say her last name because she is this program. Miriam was probably the hardest person I've ever worked for in my life. Big black lady. Every time she came, everybody's terminal was shake. Like your whole computer would just start shaking and we knew Marion was coming. So we'd be talking, men talking about girls or whatever the case might be. And then all of a sudden, your terminal would start shaking. Oh my God, Marion's coming. Turn around, let's get back to work. And Marion was hard on me. So of course I thought, oh, she just don't like a young brother trying to do something. You know, she don't. That really wasn't it. And I remember one night I was working on a program that had to be 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Of course I had been there since 7.30. And I couldn't get it to work. And she came down and she plopped down next to me and she said, how did you write this code but you can't fix it? You need to pay more attention to what you're doing. I'm gonna cut your salary if you don't improve. And every time we had a team meeting, she would always berate me in front of the team. Like, everybody would say what they were doing and when I went to say what I was doing, she had a thousand questions, but she had asked a thousand questions to anybody else. And that went on for quite some time. 
But after working with her, she made me be thorough. She made me make sure you understand what you're doing before you write the code. Make sure you know how to fix it. Make sure you understand all the pieces of code that you're going to touch or whatever data you're passing will affect the other programs you're passing it to. And from her, from this point on, I made sure I was thorough in technology. I'm telling you those two stories to say, in tech, you will need mentors. You will need people that will hold you accountable, but not only hold you accountable, walk you through what is it you're doing. Because you can Google your ass away. You can Google here, Google there, YouTube this, YouTube that. And if it works, do you really understand why it works? So the purpose of this platform is to bring the culture into the fourth industrial revolution. To teach them about coding. To try to mentor them through and give them the breakdown of what's up. Not just teach you c -sharp teach you Java or just teach you database, but you don't understand how it hooks to the actual language or you don't understand how it hits a phone or you don't understand what an app is. You don't understand the purpose of an app or a service bus or anything that you call yourself learning if you're in school. So that's the purpose of it. So I hope you'll join me. I hope that this platform will push you or get you involved in the fourth industrial revolution that you're not afraid of the fourth and Devil revolution. And if you've never heard of it, hopefully today you've heard of it for the first time. Because in the future, that's where the jobs will be. Everything is gonna get automated. Look at these electric cars that are coming out in 2022, 23, 24, 25. I wonder what happens to that mechanic who was working on a combustible engine. He was a repairman for the, for the current cars that we're currently driving. And then you have solar energy, again, Solar energy is still going to rely on some technology. The days of going to war, hand-to-hand -hand combat, people now are cyber attacking everybody else, shutting down systems, costing people money. That's the world we live in. So hopefully you'll join me. We'll walk through this together. If it was easy, everybody be doing it. So there's going to be a little, some bumpy roads here and there. But if you stick to it and treat it like a puzzle piece, then we're going to learn one puzzle piece at a time. And then we're going to fit these puzzle pieces together to tell a story. And that story is the story of how you get a job in tech and how do you become successful in tech. All right, that's all I got for now. Let's get it. Peace. Puck, 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 Thank you for joining us today. And if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe or press the like button or join us at 558parksidetech.com. And remember, program or be programmed and be greater than your greatest excuse and learn tech because life and tech waits for no one. Peace. Yeah. Yeah, 558 Park Site Tech in effect, that take 558 Park Site Tech in effect, fe 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 tap in the future. Let me introduce you. 558 Park Site Tech, about to school ya. 558 Park Site Tech in effect, fe 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 558 Park Site Tech in effect, fe 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 558 Park Site Tech in effect, fe 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 fe